This video covers watchdog timers, in specific the independent watchdog. We're going to dig in a little bit on this watchdog timer. I already have a project created here with the independent watchdog. We're just going to follow these directions here. So I initialize the LEDs here. I have the green, red, blue and orange initialized. And then let's go to my main function. Um, I have my system tick parameterized. Uh, so watch the video about the system tick on how to parameterize your system tick to generate interrupts at a certain rate. And we're going to use that as our delay function now to create delays with a precise timing. And then I'm going to configure the independent watchdog timer. So I call the function here. So let's go to our libraries, STM source, and let's pull the independent watchdog library. And if you follow the how to use drivers, it tells you that you need to enable the registers using this function. That's what we did here over here. Enable the right axis, then parameterize the prescaler. And that's what I do here with the prescaler. We'll go over these numbers in a minute. And then configure the counter, set reload, and then enable. So here we go, set reload, and then enable. And then at last, during your application, make sure that you call the reload counter so you reset the timer. And that's what we have inside of a while one. I'm toggling the bits and I'm resetting the counter by calling the function reload counter. So remember the watchdog is to guarantee that your code is working with no problems. So if something happens to your code, the watchdog resets the CPU or the microprocessor. So let's go over really quick to these values over here. So how do I know uh, what is going to be the timing that I need to reset the watchdog? So we pull our data sheet, we go to the independent watchdog section. And if we scroll down, we have a block diagram here with a little bit more information about the watchdog. Here we, ho here we have the 8-bit prescaler that comes out of uh, your L. SI clock, which in our case is not 40k Hertz. We'll see in a minute how much is it. And that's what it feeds your 12 bit down counter for your watchdog. All right, so prescaler, we have different types of prescalers over here that divide your clock. This is actually the clock of your LSI, which is 32k Hertz. In my case, I'm using a prescaler. I'm divided by 256. That means that my timeout, my watchdog timeout is going to be eight um, milliseconds. So if I go back to my code, that's what I have over here, 32K Hertz. I divide by 256 and you get your eight milliseconds. And then what you can do is how many of those eight milliseconds do I need to count before the watchdog actually resets? And that's what the reload does. So if I do eight milliseconds times 63, I need to guarantee that I do a reset before this time happens otherwise my microprocessor will reset so let's do a quick test over here i have the oscilloscope connected to the green led and i have a delay 40 milliseconds which is less than half a, half a second so everything should run properly i'm going to deploy the code inside the board press play and if i go to my oscilloscope i have my square wave here the period here is the double of what i have because it's toggling the pin so it's 40 milliseconds toggles up 40 milliseconds toggles down so the period is actually the double of the time that i have there so as you can see i have 80 milliseconds everything is fine if i go to my code and if i make this delay longer than 500 milliseconds you will see that the wave will get disrupted so let's say that i do a delay of 600 milliseconds and i'm going to deploy that code into my board and press play go and let's put a different time and now as you can see i no longer have the 500 milliseconds or sorry the 600 milliseconds up and 600 milliseconds down notice that 
it affects my period a little bit here. I no longer, I should have 1.2 seconds of period. And notice that sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. It's just, let's put a little bit of another timeline here, a little bit longer to see what happens. Let's wait until it populates to the end. And notice that it's not exactly the value. You should have 1.2 because it resets the CPU and it screws up with your wave. Let's go back to a different value. Let's say that let's go close to to that value of 500 milliseconds. This one is going to work fine. It's going to have a period of one second. I press play, go to my wave generator and Let's wait until it gets like a full window here. It's already stable. And here you go. You get your second. Let's put a little bit faster here. 500 milliseconds per division. And here you go. Your CPU now is working fine. It doesn't reset because I'm able to reset the watchdog before the watchdog kicks in and that's all for your independent watchdog